Hey guys, David here from Athletic Edge Gym Aberdeen, bringing to you another video to help you guys get through lockdown until the gyms reopen, hopefully at the end of April. Now I haven't done an exercise workout video for a couple of weeks because unfortunately I hurt my back. And so as I'm just getting back into training, I thought this would be a great time for me to share with you a kind of like a how to manage your back and get back into training video. This will cover a few things from what to do during active pain and flare-ups, how to prepare through prehab and flexibility to uh, prevent it occurring, and also some other interesting points that you may find useful as well moving forwards. So first of all, let's start at the beginning. During active pain and flare-up, the first thing you want to do, especially if it's a muscular pain, obviously it's very different if you've got issues with your discs or if you've got an issue with uh, your bones or you know like tendons that's a different ball game but if it's a muscular back injury your standard lower back pain which a lot of us get you want to try and stay mobile it can be very easy to just sit on your bum and not move because when you're not moving is when you're in the least pain but actually by not moving the muscles stay tight because what happens is the injured area doesn't always tend to be the sorest part because what happens is the muscles around the injured area will all tighten up to protect it, to prevent you from mobilizing and using the sore muscle. But what you need to do is just gradually ease that tension by just staying as active as you can. I'm not saying run a marathon, it would be things like walking, it would be gentle stretching, and maybe as time goes on, a light workout in the pool, or if obviously we don't have pools available at the moment, gentle exercise, whether it's a, on an exercise bike or a cross trainer or something like that. Just a gentle stuff to start getting you going. And then it would be a case of just adding in more of the stretching. As well as that, uh, finding a good physio uh, or chiropractor or you know whatever kind of person you normally use to deal with these injuries is really key as well because they can help you get to the bottom of what the cause is and give you some treatment plans for it as well, which we'll get to slightly later on. Right, so it's pretty simple. Step one, don't be too sedentary, start moving as soon as you can and just, you know, take it gently does it. Once you're able to return to training gently, there are systems you need to put into place to ensure that you don't get recurrence and to ensure that uh, you're able to maintain the performance levels you had before. Because once you've had an injury, uh, things can drop back, you can lose your confidence, it can get in your head. And also, it's an indicator that the way you were lifting was maybe potentially not suitable. So the first thing is, you need to have some sort of prehab and mobility routine built into your daily life. And I know this can be a pain in the bum. I'm not a big fan of having to do rehab exercises every day. And I have to be honest with you, I don't do them every day. But they can be very beneficial. And I mean, it's been shown that a lot of lower back injuries are a result a lack of control of those muscles. The, the first term is a lack of neuromuscular control. So basically being able to, for your head to be able to tell the muscles that stabilize and support your core, that support your spine, to hold you in the right position when you're doing different things. So for example, when you're holding a plank, your back not dipping, that's from control. You know, and that control is, is learned. It's not, it's not automatically there. So being able to do that and having the muscles surrounding the spine strengthened, stabilized, and trained to hold it that way will help prevent further injuries and is a great way to prehab your back to prevent having to do any habili uh, habilitation after an injury. Now, there is no one size fits all uh, fix for this and there's no specific prehab plan that I would say, you know, is the only one you need to do. But if there was one that I would rate above the others, it would be something called the McGill Method. This is a back specialist called Stuart McGill. And he has his kind of McGill Method, which is basically to assist the lower back and get people back into exercise who've had debilitating injuries in the past. His prehab routine consists of an exercise trio he calls the Big Three. Now, I'm gonna show you guys the Big Three and their progressions, and then I'll just talk about some additional things we can do afterwards as well. So the first one is a curl up. Now I'm gonna do these Initially on the bench, these first two, and then I'm gonna move the bench out of the way and we're gonna do them on the floor as well. Because obviously sometimes in the earlier stages, you don't want to be 
uh, overextending to get down to the floor because that might be too tight for your back. But, and also it's good because it's more visual for the camera here as well. So the first one is called a curl up. So this is exercise one of the big three. So you want to lie back, you need to make sure your bench is long enough here. And what you're looking to do, bring your foot up here. Then all you want to do is place one hand under the natural curve of your spine. So you shouldn't be lifting, you shouldn't be lowering, under the natural curve of the spine. And put the other hand up next to your head. Now, what I want you to do is curl your head, chest and shoulder up as one unit. Ensuring your core stays engaged throughout. And then smoothly come back down. Notice I'm not curling my chin. Everything stays stable. And you'll find this engages a lot of those stabilizing muscles to help give you a good, strong, neutral core. Obviously, once you've done one side, you would then swap and do the other. Initially, you start off doing 10 reps a side, and as time goes through about two to three sets, do that every day, and as time goes on, you could increase that uh, either in repetitions or by adding a pause hold at the top of the repetition. Now, the second exercise we're going to look at is a bird dog. Now, people who've done yoga will be familiar with this. A bird dog is a pose, and again, I'll show you this on the bench. There's different variations where you want to be kind of in quite a neutral position. So you want your hands to be under your shoulders and your knees to be under your hips. This is one of those ones that's easy to describe, but it's hard to do correctly. So forgive me if I don't do this quite perfectly now. From this position, you want to make sure you have a neutral spine because the tendency, as soon as you lift that leg, is to arch your back. We don't want the back to arch. There will be a natural small arch, but we want to then just control the core, brace the core, and then just smoothly lift the leg out behind. Now, initially, you might find anything above this and the back arches and you end up moving your chest and moving your shoulders. So you can only go as high as you can go initially. So having a mirror can be very useful for this one. And when you get to the top, having that little pause at the top. A more advanced version for this, once you've mastered that, because that, so that would be like 10 aside, maybe with a little three second pause at the top each time, three sets a day would be a good start point as well. For both, both legs, obviously I'll show you the other leg as well. Neutral core, hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips, and then just lifting out to the back. Now for me, I find it much easier on my left side than my right, and I can see just from the video here that I am arching a little bit, Control isn't perfect, but that's why we do these things. We work on them to get better at it and to improve the neuromuscular control to prevent the back arching. Because when I'm in a situation where I'm doing a lift, or when I'm doing a plank, or when I'm doing a deadlift, I don't want my back to be creating that arch because it's not strong enough. I want the spine to remain neutral because the stabilizing muscles are controlling it to keep it in the correct position for the lift. The third exercise is one that needs floor space. So I'm going to quickly move this bench out of the way. Now, our third exercise here is going to be a side bridge. There are two versions of this. The first one has you on your knees. This is your easier version. So you're going to have your feet behind you, 90 degree angle on your knees, knees stacked one on top of the other. Small, bend in the hips, elbow just in front or underneath the shoulder. Now from this position here, hand on the hip, I just want you to lift your hips up and forwards and then drop them back and down, all the while maintaining a strong brace in your core. This is going to strengthen up those obliques. They are the stabilizers at the sides of your abdominal core and they also support your spine. Now for a lot of people this will be too easy and you'll find after you get used to these movements, and you've been doing them for a while, especially for people who've had a bad injury and they start getting stronger and stronger, you'll need a harder version. The harder version is to make a longer lever. And that longer lever is instead of using your knees as the brace point, you stack your feet and you use your feet instead. And it looks a lot more like a side plank. Same, you've got a little bend in the hip here. Everything's braced, a little bit under the shoulder. And lift up and forwards, drop down and back. Lift up and forwards, Drop down and back. Now you do this on both sides. 
and maybe eight to ten reps, you'll know yourself in the early stages what's going to work and what isn't. And you kind of build it up as you go along, keeping a diary and a log of how things went and how they feel can be quite useful as well. Now, just because we're here, I'm also going to show you the other exercises from the floor too. So we'll do it the other way around this time for the curl up. One leg up, that hand goes under the natural curve of your back, hand on the head, and the head, chest, and shoulder. Curl up as one while maintaining that strong brace through your core. You'll feel this one, and you'll be surprised at how much you feel it as well, actually. It gives me a little judder at the top because everything's engaged, everything's all those stabilizers are working. Anytime you feel a little wobble or a little tremble in the muscles, it's because your body's trying to find the most efficient way to stabilize you, and that means you're onto a good thing. Sometimes it can mean you're, you're forcing a movement, but you'll know in this case it's a good, it's a good feeling, it's a good brace, and it's gonna be very it's gonna be beneficial for you. Now again, the hands and knees for the bird dog, the basic version. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips, to come a little bit further back there, and then drawing back and down, trying to have as little movement in the spine as possible. What you also want to prevent, I'll show you this from the back, sorry to show you my butt, is you want to prevent a twist. You don't want any twist in the movement, you don't want it to kick outwards, and just like you don't want your hips to drop either, everything needs to stay neutral, flat. So what I would sometimes do with people is I would put a yoga block on the top of their hips and if it tilts off during the reps then you know that obviously you're not quite straight as you do it. And again you can add in those arm extensions, it's a bit more difficult as you progress. So that's the McGill Big 3, they're a really good start point for building up the neuromuscular control and the muscles to help prevent future back injuries and to help you rehab from a current one that you may be working on. So these are exercises I'm going to be doing every day. Now as well as that, having a good physio or a good personal trainer who knows you, knows how you move, can be really beneficial as well because as I said it isn't a one size fits all and different exercises are going to suit different people. And some people may have underlying conditions and different situations that make them unable to do certain movements. For example, if somebody had tendonitis in their elbow, or they had a, a wrist that wasn't flexible enough to put their hands down, or you'd had shoulder surgery recently, you wouldn't be able to do the bird dog, you know? Or if you had issues with the discs in your back like I do, then potentially doing one of the other movements might not work either. So having a good PT, having a good physio, who can then also instruct you and give you these coaching movements and make sure your form is good, really important for moving forwards as well. So, they, yeah, because they can identify the key areas you need to improve on as well, because we'll all have different areas where we're weak and different areas where we're strong. So, the next thing I would say, and this usually applies to the guys rather than the girls, is check your ego at the door. A lot of times we injure ourselves because we're lifting too much, uh, and Obviously, the first thing you need to do when you're rehabbing and when you're getting back into the gym is take some kilos off the bar. Doesn't mean you're not going to get a good workout, but peeling, peeling some weights off each side, getting the form just right, rebuilding yourself, uh, it takes time. Doesn't mean you're going to get weaker. Recent studies have shown it only takes about 20% of the stimulus to maintain the, the muscle that you've built. So for the, if you think what you were doing before was 100% effort, one fifth of that effort should be enough to maintain the muscle you had and maintain the strength you had. So don't worry if you have a period of not quite hitting your peak weights because you'll soon be back there as well. As well as that, adaptation to your exercise is important as well. Obviously, you've got your two main movement complexes that affect your, your spine and your core, and that's your squat complex and your deadlift complex. And by that I mean exercises that are squat type movements and exercises that are deadlift type movements. Now you can, obviously squat is a staple for a lot of people and is a really good compound lift for building leg strength, hip strength, bum strength, core strength, but there are lots of different varieties you can do in its place that are just as effective and then will help build the stability that means that when you get back to your big lift, you'll be actually be surprised that you'll be stronger and more stable than you were before. These can include things like the leg press, 
belt squats, split squats for your squat complex movements, and for your deadlifts it can include things like uh, trap bar deadlifts, which is like the, uh, the hex bar that you stand inside, uh, rack pulls, which is where you do a deadlift but you only do the top third of the movement, so it's really good for strengthening the back and the core but you don't overextend to a point where it's going to uh, cause any issues for your back, and things like hip thrusts from the floor as well. Again, go see, you, go see your PT, go see the guy you're friendly with in the gym who works at your local gym, ask them the question and they'll be able to assist you when the gyms reopen. Or in the meantime, you could contact us, either through Athletic Edge or through myself personally, and obviously I would be very happy to help everybody with any questions or requests they had for assistance in rebuilding themselves after an injury, because it's something we've all been through before. And now, other things to be aware of. You need to make sure that you adjust intensity of in training during different life events. Now that must sound strange, strange at first, but you are much more likely to injure yourself when you have tension. So if you have a really stressful time at work, if you're not getting enough sleep, you know, if you are like going through a situation, you know, all these things are going to make you more tense. And I would say in those situations, be aware of yourself. Try and be aware of how you feel and adjust your training intensity accordingly. If I have had a very stressful day through work, I'm not going to try for a PB on my deadlift. You know, it's when you're feeling relaxed, when you're feeling good, and it's when you're well rested too. Because if you haven't had a good sleep, again, this leads into the uh, intensity during life event. If you're not sleeping well, you're not going to be training well either because your body needs that recovery. And finally, food can have a really big impact on your recovery and also on your prevention of injury as well. You tend to find a lot of the issues you have after an injury are inflammation. Now, a lot of processed foods are full of crap, and you can hear this on all the different things and all the videos you watch. Bad uh, processed foods, bad for you. Whole foods, healthy foods, good for you. But it actually it, it is it's the real deal. The anti-inflammatory qualities you get in whole foods, making sure you get your omega-3s, making sure you get lots of fruit and vegetables, good proteins in your food. This makes a big difference to both your recovery and reducing the inflammation, and also ensuring that uh, you know these things don't occur moving forwards as well. And again, nutritional advice is something that we can help with. And you can even type into Google uh, food types that assist with anti-inflammation anti or anti-inflammatory properties from foods and it will bring up a whole list of foods, you get turmeric, you know, like all these other things that can, that can assist with inflammation as well, natural remedies as well as the medical ones you get from the doctor. Now, yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much covered all the bases there, but if anybody has any additional questions or if you have any specific issues that you think I haven't covered or different exercises that you are unsure are the right ones for you. Should I be doing this with my sore back? Should I not? Drop me a line either via the Athletic Edge page or through my Instagram or through my Facebook as well. Just get in touch. And uh, yeah, I hope you found the video informative and enjoyable. Take care. Have a lovely day.